All right, welcome back. This is Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. So this is for the beginning watercolor class. For what we're doing today, we're going to do a techniques page. Um, you're going to be using basically a number 10 brush and a number one inch flat brush. You could use a, a number one, a one inch flat brush, not a number one, but a one inch. Uh, you could use a three quarter of an inch or even a half inch if you had to. We're going to be using paper towel to control our water. And we're going to be creating this uh, techniques page. But before we get into that, we want to talk about watercolor is all about how much water we have. This is just a very, you know, it's a milk jug with a hole cut out of it. Really great for holding water. Um, and with water and with watercolor, you want as much clean water as you possibly can. I usually will have two of these when I'm painting. But one thing, whenever we're painting, it's it's all about how how wet is the paper, of course, how much water we have here. But it's also about how much water we have on the brush. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the water in the brush, uh, controlling how much water we have. And we're going to basically be talking about four different types of brushes. So. If I, if I plunge this and it's dripping, that's, that's not a good thing. Uh, so what you do is you just touch it to take off that little extra bead of water. And then this is a fully charged brush, completely wet. Okay. So if I have that brush and then I have my paper towel and if I tap that brush three times or four times, I did three times, but you could also do four. This is now a semi wet brush. And then if I tap it three or four more times again, that's, then a dry brush and if I pull the moisture out that's a thirsty brush so again we're going to be doing either a fully charged or wet brush semi wet brush a dry brush and then a thirsty brush okay and again it goes it's the same thing for if we have a a round brush if we go ahead and get it really wet again take off just that one little drop of water that is a fully charged or wet brush. Hit this thing three or four times, that's now a semi-wet brush. Hit it three or four more times again, that's now a dry brush. And then if I pull more of the moisture out, that's now a thirsty brush. Uh, with a thirsty brush, you'll be able to open the brush up. If it's too wet, you can't do that. If you, if you get more water, the brush will come back together. So you can only open the brush up when it, when it gets thirsty enough to let you do that. Um, so that's what a thirsty brush will be. We'll use a lot of that for dry brushing. It also, the brush will also kind of lose some of its snap a little bit when it gets, when it gets too dry. You know, you can, it just is more malleable. But if we wet it, again, it comes back into shape. That's, that's what we want for a really good watercolor brush. Okay. So we're going to be thinking about, do I have, you know, a wet brush? Do I have a semi-wet brush? Do I have a, uh, a dry brush? Do I have a thirsty brush? What do we have? And just one last time, that's fully charged. All I did is took off the little drop. One, two, three, that's now a semi-wet brush. One, two, three, that's now a dry brush. And pull more out and that's now a thirsty brush. Okay, so that's the thing about water, knowing how much is in our brushes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the water off to the side here. And we're gonna do a techniques page. So for this techniques page, we're gonna do the most common so uh, with watercolor, it really is a technique medium. Um, there's all different kinds of techniques in watercolor. So these are the most common techniques that I'm going to show you. And then each one of these techniques, depending on which technique we're talking about, could have a dozen or three dozen or even more different variants. Uh, again, water, watercolor is really about all about is a lot about technique. Uh, you can do things in watercolor that's hard to reproduce with any other medium. Doesn't mean it can be, it just means it's hard to reproduce with any, with any other medium. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a, a flat wash. We're then going to do a gradient wash, so the wash has uh, goes from light to dark. We're then going to do a wet into wet. And then so we get the where we wet the paper down and we use a, a wet brush and then a semi-wet brush and then a dry brush. Then we're going to use semi-wet paper. And we're going to do, again, a wet brush, a semi-wet brush, and a dry brush. Um, then we're going to do um, some dry brushing. This was supposed to be, uh, this looks like a gradient of wash. So 
I didn't see this when I grabbed this one, but this is the wrong place. This should have been a you know, wet stroke on dry paper, a semi-wet stroke on dry paper, and a dry stroke on dry paper. But that's what we're going to do here instead of what, of what I've got there. And I'm doing it on this piece of paper right here. Um, then we have dry brushing where we can make all kinds of great textures. So that's dry brushing right there. We of course, we're going to have scumbling, uh, pardon me, scrubbing, and then scumbling, and then spattering, both ne positive and negative spattering. We're going to do dropping in, we're going to do removing, and we're going to do, uh, for your homework, we'll have you do creating textures. Uh, this one is where you can have dozens and dozens of different techniques, uh, among with some other ones. So we're going to put that aside. We've got a nice new paper here. I'm going to turn this upside down because it's going to be easier for me to work that way. But this will be our flat wash. Now, depending on your paper, because watercolor is all about the paper, and all papers are sized differently. Sizing is a gelatin additive that they add to the paper that makes it less absorbent or more absorbent depending on how it's sized. And not every paper is sized the same. So if I had, this is, uh, this right here is Arches paper. If I had Windsor Newton and I had uh, a Leilani and then if I had a Fabriano, um, all four of those papers will react completely differently uh, depending on the sizing because they're all sized differently. So the paint goes down a little bit differently. So we're going to go ahead and start with a flat wash. Now for the flat wash, it doesn't matter what color I use, but we're going to, we want to mix up enough of it. So I've got my palette here Again, the palette is basically a piece of um, solid surface countertop material so the water doesn't it, it pulls really nicely it doesn't it doesn't break up like on plastic and this is really great to be able to see through your washes so I'm going to go ahead and and wet that down now I use a couple different papers so to tell you the truth I don't remember how arches performs but that's all right I'm going to see how it performs in just a second no big deal uh, so again this stuff is a little fluid once you get used to to working with different papers well, or even working with your own paper, it's not that big a thing. You know, little variations are not that big a thing. If you have something, so I had a little smatter here in watercolor, you can just get it up while it's wet and it won't be that big a deal. So I think I've got enough paint down here and usually people are really shocked at how much paint it's going to take to, to do this. And the biggest thing I'm going to use, I'm going to use the biggest brush because the, bigger br the biggest brush you've got, you always want to use the biggest brush you can stand to use. Because the biggest brush, you, the bigger the brush, the smoother this will go down. And so, how we're going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and put this down, and then stroke. I'm going to reload, charge my brush against fully charged, fully wet. I'm going to overlap that first stroke, stroke it again. I'm going to go ahead and go to the third one, overlap the previous two, you know, that previous stroke again. I'm going to go ahead and again overlap this stroke once again and for the last time. Okay. Now, I'm going to move this this way. Um, if, if it like, sometimes you get like little stripes uh, when you do that and that's usually because of the sizing of the paper. So I can do a couple things. If I needed to, I could re, I could go ahead and, and do another wash. Now I'm, I'm, you see me tipping this because gravity will help this, this watercolor move around. And I'm just trying to have gravity help me to move the paint around so that it's a little bit more uniform. This is basically a flat wash. Um, sometimes, again, you'll have it where it, it doesn't quite, it, it get, looks streaky. And if that's the case on your paper, do your wash a second time. So you can go ahead and stroke it. That had a little crumbly in it, which, well, too, too late now. We're going to go ahead and go over it again. Go over it again. Go over it again. Once you start this, you gotta, you gotta finish it out. Okay. So, again, now I've got the, the paint on here, and again, I, if I need to, I can use gravity to, to help this, this paint bleed. You know, I'm just trying to get it to, to be a little bit more uniform. That's kind of the nice thing about watercolors, we can do that. So that's a flat wash. And again, if I thought that I needed to, I could again, you know, sometimes if you stroke a different direction, it can make things a little more uniform. Now you gotta be careful when you do this, because if you get too much water on here, 
you're gonna get puddles, like these puddles on the bottom. All right, so if that ever happens, if I've got something where I, I've done it, but now I've got these, these puddles on the bottom, what you can do is you can let, you can see if you can roll it back, but if you can't, then you'll go ahead and let it come collect in a corner. So this will collect in a corner. Uh, make it your brush thirsty, so I'm pulling a lot of water out of there, and then I'm just gonna touch that paint, and it's gonna suck right into my brush because I've got a thirsty brush. Okay, so again, that's really wet, and we're gonna leave that alone, not mess with it anymore, but that's, again, that's a nice flat wash. So what we're gonna do, now we're gonna do a gradated wash. Now with a gradated wash, I'm gonna mix uh, three or four steps of value. And I think I'll use a darker color because we want to actually really see this gradation. So maybe we'll use the violet here. I like this violet. This is a, a uh, I can't remember, I think this particular company calls this a Theo Violet. Um, so I like that, that rose. So the, this is a Theo Rose uh, color. It's really quite pretty. Uh, but we're going to start with our with our darkest, and then we're going to make it a little bit lighter than that. So I'm going to add water to it. I'm going to make this one a little darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it to make it a little, a little darker. Okay. And then we're going to make it a little darker still. Now I'm going to get add just a little bit of the rose because I like the little bit of red. It just seems to make it seem like the color is changing temperature uh, from bluer to redder. But this will be a little lighter, and then for the lightest, I'm going to put the the uh, you know the most water I can. Now, a really water this is called a watery you know sort of a, a a puddle, whereas this is considered milky because it's got just so much more pigment. And then these are somewhere in between the two. So I'm trying to get the um, the puddles to start off with that base the the base you know the, the the range that I'm looking for. So I'll go ahead and start with this first stroke. Okay, that's kind of dry, so I'm going to go ahead and do another stroke over the top of it. Then I'm going to go ahead and wash this, pull out the excess. I'm going to do the next stroke. Okay, I might have waited a little bit too long on that, so let's see if we can go ahead and do it. the second stroke, like so. We're then going to go ahead and take the take, clean out my brush, come over here and do a third stroke. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a fourth stroke. Okay. Now there's certain papers will do this where they'll do some banding. If that's the case, I'm going to see if I can go ahead and put a little bit more water on here to get this paint to move slightly. While it's wet, I might be able to deal with the banding. So, first I'm just trying to get that to soften a little bit. Now if that happens on your paper, that means pre-wet your paper before you do a gradient of wash. Uh, so the paper, again, some papers will do that more than others. Um, also the pound of the paper will, will, will affect this. So we're going to start again. We're going to start with our darkest. okay, And then we're going to come over here and we're going to make it a little bit lighter. Stroke it again. Then we're going to come over here. Oops, let's make that a little thirsting. Pull some of that back off. Go to our second puddle and stroke that again. And then maybe for this last one, we'll just do straight water. Okay. So there's our gradated wash, going from darker getting lighter. Um, wish there was a little bit more gradation through the middle value, so I'm going to stroke that again. Like so. Okay, and then we're going to make the darker thing just a bit darker. So let's see if we can get some real, this is again called a, a milky wash. There's much more pigment there. Okay, definitely more pigment there. Lighten it up, stroke it again, lighten it up, stroke it again. So again, this is now graded to wash. Now if it gets too wet, I can I can go ahead and try to go back and forth. Don't not tip this way, don't don't tip it this way to that way. That's just gonna be 
that's just asking for trouble. So again, we're going to try to do a gradient wash. Uh, if we have something again that's really again driving us nuts because it's just not it's not doing too well, um, this is the only way to deal with this. So sometimes people work this over and over and over. The only way to work to try to see if we can do any more to this is basically to wet this whole thing down like so. And you could either do one of two things. You either go, well, that's what I'm going to live with, or you go ahead and take off all the paint. If the paper's still wet. This is the nuclear option. If ever you have to do something like this, understand that this is not preferable. But you can pull this and you can take what would have been a mediocre wash and make it a little bit better. So this is still, again, this is still wet. We're going to go ahead and we can start this one more time. This should still be wet enough, but just to make sure I didn't pull off too much water, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Go ahead and wet this down. Okay, come back over here, make my puddle. Start off with this. Okay, then we're going to go to the next step. Make a little bit, you know, stroke with, it with that. Add some more water to this. Stroke it again. Gotta be careful, it gets too wet, you can't control it. If it gets too dry, you can't control it. So there's something to keep in mind while we're doing this that um, again, that's why I didn't just get more water. If it gets too wet, you have to pull water off. So again, that, that'll be our gradated wash. It's not bad. And so again, there's our gradated wash. Uh, we're gonna do uh, the next one. Is a, is a fun one where we actually will wet down the paper. You'll do this in clouds and stuff. You want something to really, really diffuse out really nicely. This is not a nice way to do it. So we'll, we'll wet this down like so. I think we'll do a different color this time. Uh, so we're gonna get this nice and wet. While we're doing that, we're gonna also get this one nice and wet. So, because this is supposed to be semi-wet, so while we're doing this one, this one will be sinking into the paper. Okay, and the the way that you can tell whether the wet the pardon me the paper is wet versus semi wet is that semi wet will have it will not be super shiny. It will have sunk into the paper a little bit. It won't be completely matte, but it won't have the same sheen as the wet paper. Now you don't want too much water on here. You don't want puddles. If you got puddles, that's a that's a problem. So I had a couple places where I had, again, just a little bit too much water. Take it off. No big deal. All right, so we're gonna go, go in here and we're gonna take some of our, uh, some paint over here. And this is gonna be a fully loaded brush. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on. So this is our wet brush, okay. So that's the first one. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick up some more paint. And this time I'm actually gonna, now you're gonna do this at the ferrule, and don't do it out here at the end, you'll take the paint out. I'm gonna tap this, one, two, three, four. That's now a semi-wet brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and stroke this again. Now I'm stroking this very, very gently. You wanna, you know, you don't wanna be pressing into the paper, all right? And so now we're gonna take this, we're gonna load this again. And again, this time we're gonna tap this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's, um, this is now, you know, I tapped it eight times, so this is now a dry brush. Okay, and again, I'm using, now you can see where that puddle is. There's a puddle right here of really wet paper. Uh, you know, a puddle of water seen there. And part of this is because I don't have this nice and uh, stretched out. But this will continue to bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. Um, so it's interesting. Certain papers will hold more, more of the uh, of the mark than others. Certain certain papers, this would just bleed to almost nothing. This mark right here. But this is keeping keeping the uh, keeping its shape. And I think I said that this was uh, arches, but I'm starting to suspect it's Windsor Newton because they usually hold a little bit more shape when you. When you put the, the when you put a mark on them, all right. So this, uh, 
this is sunk into the paper uh, into, into it a little bit. It doesn't have the really bright sheen except over here where the water is pooled because again this isn't this isn't uh, stretched. I stretched it and then it was cut off and, and so I just grabbed it. I would want this stretched down. This is 140 pound uh, hot pressed watercolor, no hot, not hot pressed, um, rough, not rough, try it again, cold pressed, thank you. Rough is the roughest, cold press is the medium, and then of course the hot press has very little texture of the three, the least amount of texture of the three. I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush a semi-wet brush every time I stroke it from here on out, or just on this next one. And so we're gonna start off, wait a minute, what did I say? I don't know what I said, let me try this again. I'm gonna load this brush full of paint, and we'll try this one more time. All right, so got that loaded i'm going to go ahead and make a stroke there and then i'm going to go ahead and make this a semi-wet brush i'm going to go one two three four i'm going to do it right here on the ferrule that's two then we're going to do this again load the brush and now we're going to tap it again on the ferrule because i don't want to do it out here that'll take the paint out we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight okay that's now a dry brush okay and what we're looking for is that these should should uh, bleed a little bit less. Now I can tell. So the 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 paper is still fairly wet because if we look at this and we look at this, we're like, man, why is this? You know, this semi wet paper. You should have it hold the mark a little bit more, and that so the paper wasn't dry enough. If I waited for this another five minutes and then made another mark on it, the mark would be completely different. But sometimes people will say, well, wait a minute, why, this was really wet. Why is this one spreading more than this one? The other thing about watercolor is certain colors will spread more than others. So this was uh, a, a burnt umber, which is basically just dirt ground up, right? It's a very heavy, big particle. This is a dye color, and that particle compared to the, if this is the size of the particle that was the, that, that was the um, umber, because again, it's just, it's, it's iron oxide. This other little particle is so small in comparison, you can't hardly see it, it'd be like a grain of salt next to this. Because of that, it floats on the paper more, floats around more, so that's why these spread out more. Not only does the paper did not get dry enough, but I used a color that was used as a dye, and that dye spreads more, so that's, I should have been thinking about that, but that's something to keep in mind, is that you have certain paints like your cadmiums, are bigger, your iron oxides are bigger, and then you have dye colors like the Theo Rose, the Theo Violet, um, the, the, the Thalo Blue, and the um, Viridian, and um, yeah, that's, that's, the others are gonna, be, are, are gonna be a little bigger. But that's why, so even sometimes the color you choose to mix with uh, will change the way the paint's gonna perform on the paper. It's fairly interesting, really. Um, and now, so I've got these lights over here too, so it's a little, a little harder to kind of see the paper a little bit, but I'm, I'm gonna try another stroke, because I think, and if you ever wanna check the paper to see if it's wet, you touch it with the back of your, of your hand. And if, if you touch it with the back of your hand, it's, it's cool to the touch, that means it's, it's still wet. I'm gonna leave that alone for a little while. I thought it was a little bit drier than what it was, but I touched it, it's still really wet. So I'm gonna come over here to the dry, now, part of this is just to kind of take a look at what this stuff is doing. Um, so if I use a wet brush on dry paper, and then I take this and again, I, I, I touch the ferrule, one, two, three, four, and I'm turning the brush each time, then that's a semi-wet brush. And then if we get this over here, and we go, okay, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is a dry brush we're not gonna see a whole lot of difference in terms of the mark. Like this is wider, this is medium, and this is this is actually more, you know, sort of over here is doing a little better that, than that. But still, this is getting smaller as we go from wet stroke, semi-wet stroke, to drier stroke. I wonder, let's see if we're gonna to try to do strokes in between these. This is a fully charged brush, and this paper has been allowed to sit a little bit longer. Okay, nope, still really wet. Interesting. 
Again, that's a dye color. So let's try that again. I was telling you about the, the iron oxides, how heavy they are. Let's put this up here. So this is an iron oxide. See how this doesn't spread as much as that is? And that's all to do with how big the particle is that's in that watercolor. So sometimes you'll have different colors because certain colors will, will, will float more and others colors won't, depending on their size. Plus, depending on how wet or dry the paper is. This is kind of what I was looking for. You can tell this paper is a little drier than this because this is the same paint on both. And this one spread more and this is darker plus it kept a little bit more of that mark and that's a fully wet stroke and that's what we wanted. We wanted to show you know the paper will, will depending on how wet how dry it is will look different but it's still too wet for this one to look different because again it's a much finer pigment. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to do some dry brushing. Now this is where we're going to open up our brush. It's too wet won't let me open it so I pulled more out so I need uh, we call it dry brushing but we need that thirsty brush and what I'm going to do is we're going to come on over here now I keep my paints out so they dry out, so it's a little bit easier to do it this to do it to do this where we're picking up. We have just enough water that it'll barely dissolve that, and then with this I can make you know little textures. I can make you know if I wanted things to look like um, some sort of weeds or something, we could overlap. Just a little bit of you know, these, these strokes to, to make it seem like there are weeds there or what have you, um, or blades of grass or what have you. Um, so again, we could go ahead and you know, what have you, it doesn't matter. We can just, again, give, it gives you a nice random mark. Um, now, I guess random is, is the wrong word. I can also take some of that off if I wanted to, lighten it up. Uh, you can also take any sort of material, like some people will use sponges, and again, you can use that to press textures. Whoops, it's not wet enough, so I need to wet this down a little bit more. But I could even take this and do random textures by pressing that on the paper. You know, so some people will actually really get into this where they're taking advantage of of that and then usually you go over that again you know with a little something and you're just you're creating little textures and stuff it's, it's just really kind of fun and satisfying and I could also do it you know I could do this I could make a mark with a dry brush let's say I was doing an old wooden you know fence or an old uh, wooden um, barn or something again you could use this to create grain you know for you know different slats of wood or what have you you know, it's, it's really a great, uh, dry brushing is really just a lot of fun when we, when we start to use it. Um, so again, you can, you can do all kinds of things with dry brushing. Um, some people will scrub away from themselves, you know, some people will, you know, do that where, they, where they're twisting and turning the brush. There's just all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Again, you could get, um, you can use different textures, you can use different materials. All kinds of stuff. Good stuff. Dry brushing. So we're then going to go ahead. I think this might be dry enough now. Let's let's check this out. So let's go ahead and get this red, and let's really saturate this. And let's see if we can make it just a little bit darker. I'm going to see if I can go right back over that mark. And if it's dry enough, there we go. That's so that's what I was looking for in the semi-wet paper. So it's gotten dry enough that even our, now let's go ahead and make this a semi wet brush. Okay. See how that's holding it even more. And then we can make this into a dry brush. And the dry brush isn't bleeding at all. So that's what we can do on the semi wet paper versus the, the really wet paper. Um, and again, you, I could have made it slightly wetter, but I wouldn't have done. I couldn't have gotten away with this paper that's not that's not um that's not stretched. Some people will use really wet washes. Wet washes. Some people will, will use really wet washes on like uh, 
a 300 pound paper, you know, really, really wet, get these gorgeous skies. It's wonderful stuff. Now for these guys, we're gonna do with something a little differently. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to do um, some scrubbing. And for this, we want a, a paint that we can remove. And so let's see if we can, uh, there's certain colors that, that are dye colors that won't remove well at all. And then other colors that do. So we're gonna see if this is, this should be a color that will remove somewhat because again it's an iron oxide these are all iron oxides some of these will stain just depending on the manufacturer um, and then we're going to use something like let's do this one because I don't want you to think that all all colors all dull colors lift and bright colors don't it just depends on what the color is made from so we're going to let that And with scrubbing, I could I could take some off while it's still wet. That's for sure. I could come in here, you know, this is a little a little damp, and I could scrub off, you know, and make little marks. I could do if something looks like a rag roll. You could certainly, you know, you could you could do stuff like that. But we're actually going to let this dry, and 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 uh, try to take some off. Now with this, I'm going to turn this back over again. This is scumbling. Um, scumbling is something I don't do a lot of, but I've seen certain people do it very, very well. So I'm always a big believer in, in just, just because I don't, watercolor is so vast and has so many different techniques that you can really get, uh, you can get lost in them. But so, usually, you're, you know, artists will gravitate towards their favorites, uh, just like with anything. Um, and I certainly have mine. And this is one I don't do a lot of, but I've seen people do it. So I'm going to let you know what it is. With scumbling, it's usually done with underbrush or shrubbery or something of that nature. And it's really haphazard. People will, you'll see a lot of times when people are, are, are scumbling, they're actually, they'll, they'll, they'll flip the brush back and forth while they're sort of pushing up on it. And again, they're just trying to get these, you know, these, these textures that are, you know, a little, a little random. And again, so people will do this with, with, with shrubs and, and different sort of grasses and things like that. And then usually they'll use that as a tone, and then they'll come back in there with some, with some other marks, you know. And again, uh, while they're, you know, a darker value or something, while they're again they're they're trying to keep these very, very random sorts of marks. Okay, so this is kind of what scumbling is, and again, you can take it off, put it on. Um, let's say we did it; we wanted some more depth, so we're going to do a third um, layer of value. So again, that's that's scumbling. Again, I don't do a lot of it, but there certainly are people that do, and so why not? Why not show it to you? Um, this one is so spattering. Now, there's all different kinds of spattering. There's, um, let's see if we can get away with this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put down a color, and we're going to do some spattering into wet paint. So you're going to load your brush with some paint, and it's going to be you want it really well loaded so that you can tap it on your finger and it will throw some of the paint around. Okay, that's spattering into a wet wash. You can also spatter onto dry areas too to give them texture uh, and people will do a lot of that, you know, for rocks and, and different, different techniques and different things. And it can be a really satisfying way for, you know, it might be under a wash or three or I remember a guy that would do these petroglyphs and so he was always spattering stuff and really building it up in, in different ways and stuff. And so again, spattering, it's, 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 it can be really fun. You know, we got some yellow, we got some red. We got some, you know, well, some stuff that's wa more watery and stuff that's not. So again, that's, this is just uh, positive spattering as you might call it. The last one we're gonna we're gonna try to see if we can get a lifting color. So we're gonna we're doing gonna do negative spattering where you you have an area where you actually 
throw water into it and then lift it. So we'll try this little stripe with some of the negative spattering. So we also are going to do uh, some removing. And removing is a little lighter handed than the scrubbing. You might be like, well that sounds kind of like the scrubbing. It is kind of like the scrubbing. It's just a little, you're using a much lighter touch to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this here. As far as that goes. Okay, so this will be for the, the scrubbing. By the way, the gradation is starting to, to dry out. It's not looking you know, so bad. So again, if I put another layer on it, you'd hardly know that it, it has, it, it, I had some issues. I could say it had some issues, but let's be, let's be, let's be serious here. Um, creating textures. Now creating textures is a fun one. There's all kinds of ways to create textures. Um, and basically you're going to use a wash of something. So you're going to have just, you know, sort of a wash, a fairly flat wash. It doesn't have to be flat. It can be a graded wash for that matter. Um, I can see little splotches in this. Again, if that's happening when you put down your paint, uh, make sure to immediately go and wet it down. Again, that's a, that's where you're fighting the sizing of the paper. And so just keep that in mind because if you haven't worked on paper before, just see how it reacts. Um, and then you just roll with it. There's a little bit, you know, with, with watercolors, they're, uh, you know, they're ready for anything because watercolor is different depending on the time of year, depending on the moisture in the air, how, you know, how dry it is outside or how wet it is outside. It, it all changes the way the watercolor will, will move. But now we've got this down, we can, we can do some things. I could take this and kind of, uh, make like like a rag roll, uh, you know. Like sometimes you was big in the '90s where they do this on the walls and stuff. But I could go ahead and take this and uh, you know do this and then just roll it over to make a texture that way. You can also you know I could I can take saran wrap while that's wet, put saran wrap on this little thing, let it dry, and then take it off. You can put um, tin foil on it while it's wet. Again, let it dry and then take it off. And I'll make different textures. This right here was I did with rice. So I put down the wash and, then I, and I just put dry rice into it. And that gave that texture. So again, watercolor is really great when it comes to, to creating texture. You know, you could have some of you like, oh, we'll throw some salt in there, salt wash, woo! And you certainly could. You know, again, watercolor is really great for you know, creating textures. And again, you could layer too. You could say, well, I want a little bit of blue in there. Maybe I'll put some blue in there and then I'll push something into that. Maybe I'll put some of this down here and I'll push something into that. You know what I mean? You can, you know, the, the sky's the limit on this. It's, it's, it's really kind of, really kind of fun when you're, it's like, so it's the good thing about watercolor. It's also the bad thing about watercolor. Sometimes, you know, it looks like when you're looking at somebody's painting, you're like, oh my goodness, it looks like, uh, yeah, they're not afraid to make textures and it just becomes a painting about texture and nothing else. That's all it's got to say is look how, you know, you know, cool I am and you know, look how look how great that texture is. Um it become it can become really boring really quickly. Um So you want something usually something more than just, "Oh, look, I can throw a bunch of saran wrap on my painting." Um Again, I could I could I could I could, you know, smatter stuff in here. This is the, you know, again, this is where you can just start, sky's the limit. I can just start doing all kinds of stuff to create textures. I can then throw rice into it, you know, so you'll get this variation that you can't get any other way. That's kind of fun. Um, so then we're also going to do a dropping in. With dropping in, what we're going to do is we're going to go, first we're going to get this really wet. Now, does it always have to be really wet when you drop in? No, it doesn't. Uh, there's times where I'm, I'm tapping the brush while I'm in a wash. So it will leave more paint there, that's dropping in. But this is the wetter side of dropping in, and this is kind of fun. Uh, fireworks start to happen almost when you do this, but it's, I really like it. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna get some paint, we're gonna squeeze the paint out, and literally drop it in. Now again, I could do this with an eyedropper, where I, I if I mixed up enough paint, 
I actually have a little eyedropper here, right? And I could just, I could literally just take some of that up into my little eyedropper and just go ahead and drop it on that way. But that's not near as fun. I, I want to make this, I want to have some fun with this. So we're going to get some blue in here, drop some blue in there. Um, we can squeeze it in to literally drop it. Why not? Um, you know, we can go ahead, get over here and get some, some yellow in here and, and drop that in. Why not? You know, so have some fun with this. Uh, this is going to continue to spread and spread and spread for the, in the next hour or so. It'll be all kinds of fun. So we've got everything done. Again, uh, the only things we haven't done yet is the negative smattering and the scrubbing. Now scrubbing is just, I can do it with a brush, I can do it with wet tissue paper, I could do it with a sponge. I even, I get pretty aggressive sometimes with my watercolor, so I've even done it with a Brillo pad, sandpaper. Um, so it's like after it's dry, there's one where I did a, stained everything in purple and then did a charcoal drawing and then took out the lights with uh, with a Brillo pad and 200 grit and 120 grit sandpaper. Uh, I've seen some people take orbital sanders and, a, and 300 grit sandpaper to a, uh, you know, to their uh, 300 pound paper watercolors. You can really beat them up if you got nice paper. But with the scrubbing, we're going to go ahead and really try to take this off. Now, again, I can, I'm going to pull up the excess and I'm getting really aggressive. My brush is really, you know, trying to get that out there. I could use this paper towel again to, to draw into this. And there's some people that really get into the drawing side of their watercolor. This is not, uh, this is a very aggressive technique. Once you start doing something like that, there's no more, it will no longer look like that nice little bright little watercolor. It's going to push it deeper into the fibers. And some artists like that. Other, uh, other people, they, they like the, the stuff that stays on the surface. It, the, one style is not better than the other. It's just, you know, what, what your personality is will come out when you paint normally. After you've done it and learned how to do it, your personality will come through. So that's scrubbing where you're being more aggressive. We also have removing. Now removing, we're trying to be much, we don't want to disturb the paper like we did with the scrubbing. So with this, let's see, we get this nice and wet. And then we're going to wet this down very, very gently. Uh, we can stroke it maybe once or twice, but again, we're not trying to be very, um, we're trying to be very gentle with this because we're trying to keep the paper intact. With this one, we don't care. We're going to brutal, the paper's going to get brutalized. Um, and then what you do is you just come over here and you blot the water to see what picks up. Okay. So again, this is also, this is removing and lifting. Uh, but with, again, with this is where we're being a little more gentle with it. But I, I, you can also lift with a color. So let's say I took this and I went ahead and this was my little puddle. Okay, I put a blue down there. Let the water do its magic. And then I went to lift it back. And now there's a little bit of green in there. This is a little, has a little more orange. This has a little bit more green. So again, you can, you can really start to shift, put some subtle shifts in there. Let's try that again. Lift that up. Again, it's gone even greener. So again, you can you can do some really fun stuff with the lifting. And you know, we can go ahead and you know, we do the same thing over here where we just maybe, you know, you start to make little little marks or what have you uh, with water and then go back in and, see, and try to lift them back out. Now, certain colors do not lift well. This color is not lifting as easily as that one. This is a, what's called a semi-lifting color. But again, I can use this to make subtle textures and all kinds of fun subtleties. We're going to try this as the last, and this will be the last of our techniques page. We're going to sprinkle some water on there. Now I can sprinkle color too. And we're going to let it sit for a minute, and then we're going to try to remove it very, very gently, like this. We're not trying to you know, get aggressive with it like this is. With this, with removing, you could, again, you could use sandpaper after it's dry. Don't do that while it's wet. You let the paper dry and then you hit it with sandpaper. Uh, you can, of course, use scrapers and all kinds of stuff. Um, certain people will take the back of their, they have certain brushes that are pointed like this and they'll carve into it. I've never been a fan of that because that cuts your paper and scores it. And I've always felt that if you're not, if you're not really brutalizing that paper, it, to me, it kind of looks like, you know, like, like, like someone just didn't know what to do with it. Um, 
Okay, so this didn't lift at all. This is not a good lifting color. Uh, so again, you, well, in the first class, we don't deal a whole lot with what what lifts and what doesn't. But as you get more into your paint, you'll start to you'll start to make a mental notes. And some people even go so far as to make, you know, they've got a little notebook or they've got files on each and every color, so that they know exactly what, and, and they memorize exactly what it's going to do on every situation. And watercolors are really, they are the chess players of the painting world. They have to be thinking of, you know, three, four, six, eight steps ahead, something like that. Um, and so you really want to have your process down. You really want to know about your colors. You really want to know about your paper. That all helps. Uh, if not, well, then you're going to be slightly limited. Um, certain artists, again, if, if, you're, if you're beating on stuff with, uh, or, I mean, if you're using like uh, you know, Orville Sanders or something like that on your paper, you're probably not all that worried about your paper and you're just going to do whatever you have to. Um, but if you're trying to do a technique where you just kind of put it and leave it and it's supposed to look all pristine and lovely, well, then you better know what your paint's doing. So, again, this is our techniques page. We've played a little bit with the flat wash, the gradated wash. We did wet uh, on, into wet paper. And then we did wet onto semi dry, and again these stayed more because first off the paper was drier, but also this is a heavier paint than this. Pardon me, no, these are the same. This is a heavier paint than this. We had to wait much longer because this was that lighter paint. This is the same color, those two. It's just that was on when the paper was a little wetter, and that's when it was a little bit, uh, you know, semi wet, and it began to hold the mark a little bit more. So we we want to start thinking about how wet is the paper. Plus we also want to know how wet our brush is. We did. You know, again, a wet, semi-wet, and dry. This was a this was a wet, semi-wet, and dry brush. Uh, this is a wet, semi-wet, and dry brush. What I want you guys to do is I want you to to do a techniques page. We're gonna have uh, you know three columns. We want four rows, so we have twelve in total. And again, flat flat wash, gradated wash, wet, and that means it's gonna be wet. And then we're gonna put the wet brush, semi-wet brush, and dry brush. Um, this is semi where we're supposed to let it wait for a while until we can't, it doesn't shimmer like this one. And then we do wet, semi wet, and dry. And then we have the dry. And again, we do our three brushes semi wet, pardon me, wet, semi wet, and dry. Then we make a thirsty brush and we can start making textures with dry brushing, right? And then we put a couple of paints down here and we tried to scrub away, see how much they come off. Now, these are, these are still semi staining colors. Uh, if it was a lifting color, I could have I could have gone to white with that very very quickly. Um, this was scumbling where we're flipping that brush around while we're kind of pushing the brush up against itself. You know, th this is really brutal for the brush. Probably one of the reasons I don't do it as much, which sounds funny because I'm not I'm not not opposed to scraping paper, but when it comes to brutalizing my brush, I take care of that sucker. Um, then we got um, the spattering. We got positive spattering. We had a wet wash, and then we spattered into there. And again, this didn't lift. It lifted a little bit, but so so slight you can't even hardly see it. Uh, but we let it dry and then tried to spatter water on it and lift it off. This was dropping in where we got really wet and we dropped in the color. That's a real fun one. This was removing where, again, it's kind of like scrubbing, but instead we're just getting it slightly wet and then just very gently lifting it off with, with our uh, paper towel. So it's a much gentler way of working. It leaves the, the paper intact. Um, and then this was just textures where you can put a wash and you can put anything in it. You can put beans in it, let it dry. You can put rice in it, let it dry. Sand, you know, put a you know clean wrap over the top of it or a plastic bag or you know uh, put like a sponge on it, let it dry. It will make you can make all kinds of textures. It is really cool with watercolor. So that is our that's our techniques page. Uh, again, where we use just the round brush and the flat brush. Go ahead and you know have some fun with this. And this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. Y'all take care now and be more creative. Bye-bye.